Over the last week, we made 17 of the 70 recipes in chard. Six mains, five sides, and six dependencies. The average dish took about two and a half hours to come together, fed six people, and cost $8.50 per serving. Chard is author Genevieve Taylor's 10th out of 12 books she's written, many of them focused on cooking with fire. And this is Genevieve's guide to vegetable grilling, broken up into the five main grilling food groups. Kebabs, burgers and fritters, low, slow, and smoked, stuffed and wrapped, and sharing plates. Her whole goal with this book is to prove that vegetable grilling is more than corn on the cob and halloumi. She isn't precious about the type of grill you should use, gas or charcoal, the choice is yours. Just don't rely on her to hold your hand if you're starting out. She just mentions like a level of heat. I don't think there was even temperature guidance. She'll cover some basic techniques like direct versus indirect grilling, but makes the point that most grilling is learned on the job. For folks who don't have a grill, or if you live in a cold or rainy environment like the UK where Genevieve lives, she has this nifty little icon key indicating which recipes can also be made indoors, either on a stove or in an oven. She also includes call-outs to the 23 recipes that are vegan. All right, enough talking about it, let's get cooking. Okay, just Unexpected just fires. roll the tape. Let's roll the tape. Bye. Cake. Roll it. I think the dimensions they give us might not work very well for our skewers, so I'm gonna slightly adjust. Do you mind doing the garlic for me while you're over there? Sure. When do you want to cook the couscous? Should we do it now? Yeah, just do it. It just says cooked couscous. It doesn't say how much, so I'm just going to do whatever serving is on the bucket. Let's try it, shall we? <laughs> We're just following each other around the kitchen. What can I help you with over here? No need. I got it from here. This one's all me. Okay, you got this one. I'll hang out while you're uh, finishing up. I'm just so ready, Brent. What can I do? Did it say red or green? Or did it not say? On the, bird's it says eye bird's eye chilies. chilies, yeah. It just says bird's eye chilies? Yep. Great. Are you even heating it? No, babe. It says take it off the heat and let it sit for five minutes. I read the instructions. I don't like this couscous recipe. I don't trust it. Ooh, you gotta. Do you want the sauce part, huh? I got the sauce. Ooh, that's tasty. That's gonna be good. It's got some punch to it. Okay, I'm gonna do the watermelon and you can do the other stuff. Did you wanna respond to what I said? Or? Yeah, I heard you. I can do that. Yes, chef. I mean, not scoosh scoosh. So I'll cut up the onion and get the lime and stuff ready, but we'll like mix it together 30 minutes before. Forty-eight, fifty-one, fifty-one, fifty-one. God damn it! Four seven, fifty. Right. Roughly chop. Oh fuck that then. We need a bigger bucket. I think we're grill grill ready. time and not lose their crust. Some of these are gnarly, but I bet they all taste fucking good. Jesus. 
Well. I should have seen that coming. I like kind of saw it coming. What happened was I raised the, the coal grate so it was like closer to the corn and immediately just started on fire. I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. We'll go for it. This absolutely slaps. It's like elote, but with like South Asian flavors. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. coconutty, obviously sweet corn flavor, and then you've got a mild hit of the bird's eye chili, but not bad. This is great. I will totally make this again. Mm -hmm. That halloumi is so salty. So on the salad, we've got salty halloumi grilled. Some of it is a little more grilled than others. But very tasty, very salty. We've got some pickled red onion that gives it kind of like a bitterness. It's sharp. Sharp bitter. Yep. And then the watermelon is nice and sweet. And then we've got cilantro in here and a little bit of mint like mm -hmm. diced up, very herby. And then we've got the pistachios that gives it, I like the pistachio more for it's like- It's a little bit like oily, like richness. Yeah, I like the pistachios for the crunch that it gives. Mm. Cause I think everything mm -hmm. is kind of samey, but then you get a hit of that pistachio and it's like, ooh, that's kind of nice. Okay, Bryn has moved on. Oh, I'm having a great time over here. Did you talk about any of these flavors at all or are you just eating it? Mm. Are you just housing it? It's um, undersalted. The couscous is plain couscous. The eggplant is just very cumin and coriander flavored. Everything else is like kind of not really there. The tomatoes just taste like tomato. And then the yogurt sauce is what? Yogurt, uh, garlic, cilantro, and mint? Or is there a cilantro? I think it's just mint. So the, it doesn't have a lot of flavor is what you're saying. Yeah, these are the worst dish of the three. This is lacking flavor. Everything else had a lot of like intense, complex flavors. And this is just vegetables and couscous and yogurt. All right, it is Day one, working out of chard, we're making the herby falafel burgers with hummus and the grilled peppers with chickpeas, tomatoes, black olives, and harissa yogurt. All right, let's get cooking. Let's use this mango to hold down my book. We're gonna use the food processor a bunch today, I think. I don't need to keep this stuff or anything, do I? I just don't want to wind up like having to have read through all of the instructions before it's like, wait, did you hold on to that? Uh, aquafaba. Aquafaba from the beans? Cause you need some of that. No, oh, fuck off. Why are you telling me now? You don't want an, uh, an afternoon wiener? No, yeah, I'll pass on your wiener. Two cloves of garlic. We'll call that one small bunch. Greenhouse effect. Yeah. Four tablespoons of brown mm. This might be a little bit too wet. We're gonna try it. So we're ready to go. Time to make some hummus. One. Just a lot of dishes. It's pretty good. Grilled peppers. A large onion finely chopped. If we're stuffing it. <laughs> We're making it more difficult. Or 
Oh shit. <laughs> So like moist. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> it might be just too wet. Someone's been sitting in front of a grill. Yeah, it's very warm outside. Let's start with the thing that mm. did go really well, actually. It's a convenient little canoe. It um, is a convenient little canoe. I'm gonna send it canoe. down the Bryn River. <laughs> okay. You get a little bitterness from the pepper, and then immediately like sweetness. There's the char, all of the pepper that broke down is not very sweet. The mm -hmm. yogurt for acid, the harissa is also bringing a little bit of smoke, I think. Mm -hmm. This is very pleasant. Ooh, I really like the black olive with it too. Mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for black olives though, so like, I already knew I Tanned black olives. Yep. Okay, the only thing that is throwing me off a little bit, I think is the sun-dried tomato on this, but I agree with everything else you said. I like that the chickpea adds body. Yeah, definitely want to have grill gloves for these. It's much easier to just like manhandle them and pick them up when they're done. Or woman handle them. Or woman handle. Person handle. I'm gonna say this is a smash. As far as like um, a grilled. It's smoky and sweet. I could eat a stack of those. Okay, so the way that they want you to do this is first put in your hummus. hummus. Which the hummus is homemade. Although she does say that you can buy hummus if you prefer to buy it from. Then we do a little bit of cucumber, tomatoes, some cilantro. This is gonna be a dry fucking sandwich. Yep. Cheers. Let's try it. It's so wet. I mean, it's just chickpeas. So at least you're not in danger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is the texture of mashed potatoes though. Yes. And mashed potatoes between bread, maybe not Yeah. my favorite thing. I think if I took the bread out and just had it with the other stuff on top, mushed it all together and ate it, then I'd really like it. It needs acid badly. It does need acid very badly. Should we try some yogurt? See if it can give it a little bit of life. What do you think of the hummus though? Do you like this hummus? Or uh, it's it's fine. I feel like this hummus is very like, very middle of the road. If you told me that was just a whipped can of chickpeas, I'd believe you. <laughs> okay. There's no flavor to it whatsoever. I think the downside for me is that I have written a falafel recipe. So you've been through this whole So I've rigmarole. been through all of this before. I will say that this recipe, at least as it's written, held together in the oil. I've made it before where everything just keeps splitting the entire time but and your nothing solidifies. So. You kind of have to know the signals for it and you have to know how dense it needs to be to hit that oil and not like break apart and also cook. This might be a little bit too wet, but we're gonna try it. I mean, it, it definitely caramelized, no crust ever formed. So there's not enough like right. solidity, solidity to it. I like the flavors of the falafel, which is the texture is like- Challenging. It's its own hummus, you know? Yeah, texture. This is a green hummus sandwich, which isn't like the worst idea in the world, but it doesn't achieve its goals. I still like the flavors though. So I would say this is like a very light pass. The falafel didn't work at all, but the sandwich is still good. She doesn't even recommend yogurt as something mm -hmm. that you can put with this, but why wouldn't you? I'm so happy now. Oh, yeah. The stuffed pep peps are far superior. Mm -hmm. And so much easier to make too. I will say I'm very satisfied by this meal. We should hold on to these. These are gonna be a great midnight snack later. It is day two cooking out of chard. Today we're making the jerk spice plantain, shallot, and halloumi, and the grilled okra with Caribbean spice crumbs. First we have to make our jerk paste. into nine cubes also. Each cut into nine cubes, okay. Some of these cubes are uh, pretty massive, but sliced into half inch thick rings. Hopefully I don't break these shallots too much. Come on. Cheese, onion, these need to be covered. A 
I'll cover them anyway. All right, time to prep the breadcrumbs. Oh my God, 300 on the nose. Let's go start a fire. Yep. My poor white shirt is white no more. Oh well. In. Ooh, so hot behind the pan. <laughs> yeah. How was your second day running the grill? I mean, my shirt has seen better days. Okay, so today went really fast. I think all these recipes will take longer than most people would expect just because of the grilling aspect of it, yeah. especially with charcoal. True. You're looking at like an extra half hour just to get the coal going. Right. I'm very curious about the okra, so I think mm -hmm. we should start there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's tough. Mm-hmm. Hmm. This one's tender. It's a little soft. I really like the spicy breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs are good. So spicy. It does have a little bit of that sliminess, so if that's mm. a thing for you. Like, as long as they're soft enough, at the end, they're like easy. I like those a lot. I can't get this one in my mouth right now. <laughs> it's good though, I really like this. The breadcrumbs are nice and spicy, and I think mm. that's the only reason that I like it as much as I do. Without the breadcrumbs, I don't think this would be as good. I think just salted with like some either vinaigrette or lime or like some kind of citrus over it, it would be great. No, like a shishito no. pepper kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Grilled plantain, I'm very curious oh, I about. Got, I got halloumi, wait, let me grab it. Flavor good, oh, texture, mm -hmm. I really don't like. Texture is like a banana. Mm -hmm. It could be the level of ripeness that we got. We got some very ripe. Which they were supposed to be. Plantains. They called for ripe ones. Yeah. The, the spice oh, is bits. phenomenal. Yeah. There are two habaneros oh, in there, want, so. Yeah, it is spicy. I, I didn't know what to expect from jerk halloumi, but it fucking works. Yeah. I love it. I think together. Mm. You need the like mm -hmm. saltiness of the halloumi to cut through some of that sweetness of the mm -hmm. ripe plantain. So, what are the flavors you're getting from here? Since I made it, I want to know what you're taking. Allspice, thyme, mm. lime, habanero for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's quite a bit. Of a there. lot of salt from the halloumi. The onions or the shallots are nicely sweetened. The the plantain is a little too sweetened for me. Mm. I taste most of the jerk spices on the uh, banana in particular. Mm. Plantain. Allspice is definitely the overwhelming flavor here. There's one tablespoon of allspice and one tablespoon of cinnamon. Mm. I love the heat. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love the saltiness of the halloumi with everything else. Otherwise, I think it would just be slightly too sweet. She gives you an alternative to like mix some oil with like a pre-made jerk spice. Honestly, I think hers is pretty good. I would just make the one that she has listed. Mm -hmm. The skewers, I think if you like bananas, smash. Mm -hmm. That was the only weak spot for me. The okra, the guidance was, it was a little hard to judge, right? I'm pleased with the outcome. I would be curious to see if you had like kind of like par cooked the okra a little mm. bit and then grilled it. Blanched if it or that something. would do something, yeah. Because I I wonder if that would make it more consistent. Yeah. I wonder if she has the same problem too, where some of them are just like way too fibrous, T tentacle porny. Even massaging them with salt would go a long way. Yeah. I think. If it wasn't for that, this would be a smash for me. Yeah. Or maybe I just need to be better at like picking my okras. Light smash on the okra, just because of the fibrous stuff. Smash on the. Plantains. I'm light smash on both. I think I like the okra a little bit better, but mm. I just wish I had known better going in. I think next time we make it, it will be very good. Yes. Oh my God, those shallots got me. That last shallot just like did a- Sharp. Like wasabi. Mm. Like opening all my sinuses up. That's sulfur for you, baby. <laughs> I cut the sting, but With then the I realized that crumbs. the habanero breadcrumbs are maybe not the best pick. 
we're gonna make the barbecue sauce glazed cauliflower and the smoky sweet corn polenta cakes with green tomato salsa. All right, let's get cooking. I wish you could just add everything together and just dump everything in, but it's like, add it sequentially. Now what? Oh, let's get the rest of the stuff ready. Is this supposed to be done blanching? It said to let it cool over the steamer. After blanching? Yeah. Drain well, then allow to steam dry in the pan for a minute or so. Barbecue. It's very oniony. What do we need to do for the polenta salsa? Oh, got lime juice right in my eye. Ah. Uh. And baking soda. Time to start the grill. Um, I'll take a minute for Bad boys. Not really brushable, I would say. It's infuriating, really. <laughs> the sugar is just like charring so fast. Mm -hmm. They're just falling off the skewers yeah. entirely. Okay, well. Here you go, babe. I know how you like these dippies. Are you a crab? I'm a crab for this dip. I'm a crab for this dip. <laughs> okay, here you go. I'll get you a cake. <laughs> Woo! Those are delicious. Mm -hmm. Those are way better than I was expecting. Yeah. Since I know exactly what's in here, mm -hmm. tell me what flavors you taste. Well, all the flavors are from the salsa verde, which is like... Yep. All the parts are very visible. Yep. So like tomatillo, serrano, scallions, cilantro, right. all very visible. Right. There's a little acid going on, I think lime. Yeah, there's um, lime in there. On the corn, I only taste corn really, like sweet corn. Mm. It's all corn flavor. Mm -hmm. They're sweet, they're spicy, they're fluffy. It tastes like sweet corn with salsa on it. Mm -hmm. And the texture is very much thin cornbread. As far as like a brunch thing goes, I think those would be like excellent if Ooh, you're doing a brunch. It's giving chilaquiles, right? Mm. Like a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think definitely a smash. Yeah, definitely a smash. The challenge is just grilling the corn and then like having another like 20 minutes of work to do before you're ready to grill again. Right. It's very steppy. What if you grilled the corn and then finished them on a griddle indoors? That might make it way easier. You could also like grill the corn like long in advance. Mm -hmm. Like if you grill it the night before right. and then shelled it and we're ready to go with the corn cakes the next day. Yes. The salsa verde is solid. It would be way better with queso fresco. Do you want some? Yes. Here, try one of these. Let's go. I mean, yeah. Mm. Duh, you know? That's good. It adds a, a much needed like freshness. Yep. And a cold contrast. Yep, tasty. The, the salsa verde is fresh, it's just hot. Yeah, right, it's spicy. Okay, I can finish that later. We can move on. Blanching cauliflower before skewering it makes a lot of sense. It adds water content. Uh, it gives it less breakability, but on the downside, it made it a little soft for the skewer and just kind of slid off. Um, also, the barbecue sauce is way too thick. I had to thin it out with a beard to make it even remotely spreadable. Anyway, what do you think of the flavor? Ooh, it's got a nice crunch. The, I think the cauliflower is actually well done. The barbecue sauce is like, someone told you about bar barbecue sauce one time, and then you developed a recipe <laughs> based on that. Okay. If you squint at it, barbecue adjacent. Mm -hmm. We've written barbecue recipes before. Yep. We've developed barbecue recipes. I would not consider this a success. I might be harder on barbecue than other things because of that. Yeah, tell me why you don't like it. It's like corn syrupy. It's, it's corn like, syrupy? It is like so cloying. And there's not really any other significant flavors going on than like onion. Yeah, I really taste the onion in it. It's very oniony. Yeah, it's like onion and corn syrup. It's just I like that, like really like intense or like molasses. Mm, I think molasses that's might be the it. black treacle. Yeah, it's so thick and so gloopy. It's extremely thick. 
The cauliflower treatment I actually like. Mm -hmm. It just shouldn't be on skewers. Just do them one at a time. Yeah. The surprising part for me about the cauliflower is the crunch that you get from the cornmeal aspect. Mm. I like that. It gives yeah. it a little bit more texture. It's not so mush. Is there any tomato in it? Very, it's ketchup. I don't, I don't think there's enough tomato in it. I think if you were going to try the cauliflower thing, find a barbecue sauce that you enjoy. You can try to make hers if you like a really sweet barbecue sauce, but if you already have one that you like, just use that. What is treacle? It's like a molasses. I could go for more of those cakes. Those cakes are so tasty. Yeah, it, it's a pass for me. Um, I keep wanting to eat more, but as like analysis. I want to try and figure totally. it out more. I get it. I'm in the same boat. There's clearly a good idea here. I mean, it's more I corn cakes. More of those. Yeah, I'll go get you some. It is the final day cooking out of chard. We're making the smoked whole celeriac and the tikka spice paneer pepper and red onion with fresh mango relish. Let's get cooking. Is it relatively flat? Carefully slash a few cuts into the flesh on both sides of the top and bottom. Slash a few cuts really deep into the flesh of both sides. All right. <laughs> so I'm slashing. All right. You got it? Cool. All right, yeah, you can do that. I will toast the coriander seeds. Oh, I just want to catch all those juices. Wait a minute, we should start over? Yeah, I might as well. It's good. This thing looks like it's been tortured. Let's go put it on the grill close to the smokestack as possible so that the air is drawn through it. Here we go. Done. Let's make this tikka panik now. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. One, two, three. I need to grab another skewer. My hands are all. Brynn, get out of here. Get out of here. Stop getting these dirty. <sighs> all right. Time to go to the grill. What? Welding gloves don't give you fine motor control? Oh boy. I'm very excited to try this celeriac. It's pretty good. The OGs who were around for uh, Thanksgiving know that we love a roasted celeriac. Mm -hmm. mm. This piece isn't particularly tender. I'm gonna get a knife. It cooked for three and a half hours, mm -hmm. and it's got a nice like cherry smoke on the outside, which I appreciate. She didn't specify any particular wood. She just like add some smoking chunks. No guidance on the smoking, by the way. <laughs> Zero. But she was like, chuck some smoking chunks in and put the stuff on immediately. It's like, all right, Genevieve, take the wheel. It got a little dirty smoke, but it's it's still mm -hmm. good. I'm still getting a lot of the celeriac flavor coming mm -hmm. forward. I think if you salt it enough after, then you get more of the coriander. The or... coriander seed? Yeah. You want to heavily salt your celeriac. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good though. Yeah, you're right. Can I oh, does that get you a knife? I swear to God I got you one. I'm sorry. It's okay, I'll, I'll borrow yours. Mm. Mm. That's a uh, straight in the middle. It needs some like flavor. Mm -hmm. That's where my problem comes in. It's a pleasant base. Or is it with the non? Uh, with naan and then with the salsa. Mm. The paneer is the only thing lacking in flavor, in my opinion, but the salsa kind of takes care of that, I think. Nothing mind blowing. All the flavors are quite mild, sweet, lightly acidic. The paneer is just such a dense block that it's hard for the flavors to seep in. The bread is a lot with this. I feel like each bite is a very full bite. Mm. The salsa is necessary. Otherwise, there's not. You need some more salt, honestly, also. I'm not enough flavor. 
middle of the road with this one too, like a five. It's not bad, it's just not amazing. I wonder if this had like a salty, slightly liquidier marinade, if it mm. would soak in more. I feel like I'm working so hard just to eat any of it. I feel like the naan is sucking all the moisture out of my mouth. Mm. And then you have a relatively dry paneer and everything is just fighting for moisture. Thanksgiving? Yeah. So what did we think? This book obviously relies on grills or grill adjacent cookware, like grill pans, skewers, and skillets, but she also makes frequent use of the food processor. Only one of the recipes we made all week needed to be on a grill, and that was our smoked celeriac. Everything else could be made in an oven or on a stovetop with either a griddle or a fry pan. And some of the British ingredients like black treacle and tikka paste are a little bit harder to find in the US, but we were able to get all of them online. Since this book is all about grilling and she goes so far out of her way to make it easy for folks without barbecues to be successful, we gave accessibility a seven. One thing that I love to see in a cookbook is when the photo representation actually matches an outcome. And this book does that. The recipe design is also excellent with ingredients divided into helpful sections. And the icons I mentioned earlier make it easy to scan for alternative cooking methods. I just found myself wishing that I had a list of the recipes by method, but that's such a small detail that design is gonna get an eight. This book really leans into the milder and sweeter flavors with only a handful of intense standouts. Woo! Those cakes are so tasty. Oh my God, those shallots got me. That's sulfur for you, baby. In particular, the corn cakes, the stuffed peppers, and the okra were all amazing. This is very pleasant. The falafel burger didn't really turn out for us. It is the texture of mashed potatoes though. And the barbecue cauliflower was pretty underwhelming. The barbecue sauce is like, if you squint at it, barbecue adjacent. Mm -hmm. But every recipe gave us new ideas on how to adapt our own cooking. Flavors of six. We did find some of the instructions to be overly steppy and inefficient. I wish you could just add everything together and just dump everything in. For a book that relies on both indoor prep and outdoor cooking, we love a more economical approach to instructions. Just a lot of dishes. Mm -hmm. Writing gets a four. We think a book is worth the price of admission if we can get three smashes out of our week. Out of the 11 completed dishes, seven of them were smashes, and most of the time we could fix a pass by adding a little bit of spice, a dollop of yogurt, or a sprinkle of queso fresco. That brings our initial cult score to 6.4. The best thing about this book is how Genevieve takes a vegetable and brings out its potential without asking it to be an animal part replacement. As long as you're not afraid to set a few corn husks on fire or work around some tedious instructions, I think Chard would be a great book to have on your shelf, even if you're not vegetarian. And for 23 bucks, it's a no-brainer. The best part of this book is how Genevieve takes vegetables and brings out their potential without asking them to be an animal part replacement. And cut. Got it. <laughs>